cool. All right. Myself. Hey, how are you? I am so well. I'm excited to talk libraries. I know. I feel. I feel like. I feel very precious because I got you all to myself right now. <laughs> Chats here too. They're just you know they're quiet. They're quiet. Shh. Be, be all right, chat. guys. Uh, welcome in. Uh, my name is Sassy Gamer Lady. Uh, this is considered National Library Week to bring awareness to people about libraries. I'm currently uh, working on my master's in library and information studies. Information science, sorry. <laughs> it's been a couple of weeks, game mechanic. It's been a couple of weeks. I got that ePortfolio done, and it was every day I was writing a paper <laughs> for eight hours. Jeez. But it passed. Oh. If you want, you can take a look at my ePortfolio. <laughs> <laughs> if you <laughs> want to. <laughs> I have papers if you want to read them. So many things to read. Speaking of libraries. <laughs> yes. So what is it? Tell me, tell us about your program. What are you, can you tell me about that? I'm curious. Yeah. Yeah. So feel free to ask me whatever questions you want. Um, I'm going through San Jose State University. I've been working on my master's in library and information science for two years now. My main focus has been in leadership and management. Um, and I have like a particular interest in leading like youth programs. I really cool. love working with teenagers. I've worked for the Department of Defense Schools because I lived overseas in England for 10 years. So um, I also worked at the Youth Center. I worked at school age programs. So I have an affinity for working with um, everything else. Yes, guys, I am the Corgi Lady. <laughs> <laughs> I have a puppy too, but he's downstairs taking a nap. Nice. I might get him out if you guys really want to see him later. <laughs> so yeah, um, I'm really close to finishing my degree. Uh, actually, the summer is going to be my last semester. I was planning to do an internship, but you know, with the craziness of the pandemic going on, that's not going to happen. Yeah. So um, instead, oh, thank you for the bits, guys. Um, so instead, I'm going to take a graphic design class. Uh, oh. Yeah, so because like one of the main things with library, a lot of people don't realize is that marketing is very important. And that's where a lot of libraries are are suffering because they're not using social media and they're not using the all this free opportunities for marketing and everything else. So, yeah. So today, guys, we're going to talk about libraries because the game mechanic is a fan of libraries and um, he's one of my favorite streamers. So he's up there with my Skyrim grandma. So she's I'm interviewing her on Friday. If anyone knows awesome. Skyrim grandma, she's amazing. I know she, her and I always chat on, on Twitter to each other. It's just, we send each other funny things and stuff like that. Cool. Sorry. Aria wants her toy thrown. So that's free entertainment. So are you ready? Yeah, let's do it. Okay. So my first question is what is your first memory of a library? So uh, I believe it's, it was kind of hard racking my brain over this question. I believe my first memory of libraries, um, my grandma, uh, helped raise like my both my parents had to work and and were working folks and my grandma sort of did daycare and stuff like that and I remember going to like our local library probably for just like a like a read aloud um, but oh, okay. I, I remember for sure she would take me to those types of things um, and I remember loving them like to a kid like a library is just this amazing place that has like cushions and you can I don't know you can kind of cuddle up anywhere you want uh, which is really cool at least that was my first library um, but yeah I think I think it was that and I, I must have been pretty young like preschool ish something like that okay I, it's really funny that you mentioned that because that's one of my first memories is my grandmother taking me to a library and the kids section had like this little this little book nook and you can just mm -hmm. go sit up there and it was by a window and it just felt like such a, an amazing, lovely, you know, experience. And I love books. And I love the smell of books and I love to read. Yes. So, all right. So that's a good, that's a good start. So uh, why do you like libraries? <laughs> um, I think libraries provide a ton of services. Um, actually, I, sh I should have looked up some stats. Uh, but I used to live in Chicago and Chicago has like one of the biggest like circuits, like connect, you know, just tons the network of libraries. That's amazing. Uh, and you can get like any book there. Um, I, I really enjoy, I don't know, like learning, like education is so freaking important to me. And I can remember, I, I, I remember hating it at the time, but I remember learning about like in language arts classes about like sources and, you know, primary sources, secondary sources. And all of that was like, through the help of librarians and in libraries and stuff like that. And I am just such a proponent for creating a smarter tomorrow. 
and libraries are a, a foundational element of that. Um, I, I guess that's, you know, and, and I think that they're a good, an example of a good public service. I think there are, you know, as far as like, what was I going to, I had a, I had a quote earlier for you. What was I going to say? About oh. it? Um, dang it. What was it? Uh, it was something to the effect of, you know, like information wants to be free. Um, I, I don't know if you've heard that before, but like, you know, information should also be accessible by the masses. Um, yes. You know, and, and, and creating a smarter populace and I don't know, it all starts with libraries. It's they're like, you know, there's, it's hard to achieve perfection in literature, in history, in any sort of books like that, but it's an amazing place to start and develop critical thinkers and lifelong learners and things like that. I agree. Um, let me just say hi to a couple of people real quick. Uh, Deep Perio. Yeah. Shirley is, um, doing another, another one of these interviews with me on Friday and it's Shirley Curley who is Skyrim grandma. Um, and TBLB is like, yes, a shout out to the CPL. Chicago public libraries. Yeah. yeah. You never know. You probably have <laughs> librarians following you. They just tend to be quiet about Somebody it. Somebody in my chat today said that they're a librarian and I was like, what? That's awesome. Yeah. Really so, and, uh, hi, Cesador. And yeah, so, uh, yeah, I agree. Um, that's a big thing about libraries, uh, is a focus, a focal point and something we have to write about, which is like, it was comp. O. we have to talk about diversity, um, about global perspective and, yes. um, the importance of inclusion and making sure that everyone has access to information. And that's what the ALA is about. And IFLA is like the international, organization for making helping libraries around the world and that's another uh role that they play is making sure that people globally have access to libraries even in the poorest countries where they don't really have the money and funding for that yeah so yeah i think they represent just access to information and mm -hmm. um yeah i think i think suppression of information is the enemy no matter, no matter what is. phase of society you're in that is so uh, true so, yeah. so are you ready for what are your top five favorite books and why so, okay so Was top that five hard? Favorite, <laughs> it, it, that is hard it is hard to pick favorites because like I, I i picked some books that were maybe atypical like i tend to read um and i know this is a question later um but i tend to read uh fantasy a good bit um but Me then too. i also like juxtapose that with like a lot of like history psychology sociology and so i picked some interesting books that i think um i'm gonna i'm gonna tell you what they are and i'm gonna tell you why okay uh, why that's good so uh, the first one is The Hero with a Thousand Faces. Uh, this is Joseph Campbell's writing, his great work of writing from his life. Um, he is the uh, hero's journey guy, if you've ever heard of him. Um, and he is he's like a really smart, he analyzed all these different storytelling methods. He, he analyzed religion from, from all over the world and kind of like made a big Venn diagram and realized that like everyone's kind of telling the same stories. And so really boiled down the, the, the elements of storytelling and uh and wrote this this book about the hero's journey with it um and that's that really, really cool really cool um so that's something like i see every day like i i have a hero's journey of like me getting in the shower you know and i'm like hey, you're like i'm kind of always framing everything i see in life um around that so that one's that's really awesome. really important to me um and i think that's a cool like you know again representative of what libraries can do in in sort of break down cultural barriers and xenophobia and stuff like that um so I think that one's really important to me. Uh, the next one it might be a little weird. Uh, it, it, I've got I've got a few for you. So one is okay, Sex at Dawn. What? Uh, yeah, yeah, Sex at Dawn. It's okay. uh, it's 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 a it's an invitation and a promise. Uh, <laughs> I it's it's about it's about the history of like sexuality and oh, okay. like, the evolution <laughs> of it and things like that and sort of like dating back to you know, a hundred thousand years ago, like how we evolved and like where you know how how developing agriculture has you know so. All that is to say, it's a really cool, like, historical analysis that, like, you can kind of, like, cross-reference with your own experiences and, like, start to, you know, formulate new ideas and, and conclusions and things like that. I love, I love, like, historical uh, books like that and, and the way that they can play a big role in your life. The next one is similar. It's called The Master Switch by Tim oh, Wu, wow. which is the history of, um, like, telecommunications. Oh, neat. So they go back about 100 years and talk about AT&T and why the FCC was formed um, and then it brings it all the way up to like the Internet and sort of we're, we're dealing with a lot of the same challenges they dealt with way back then now. Um, and that's a really important role of libraries and literature, too, is, is to learn from history and see those cycles and and figure out how to best 
handle the modern challenges um, by by looking at what we've done before and what's worked and not. Um, so those are two really cool like historical uh, references that I like a lot. Um, the next one I'm going to tell you is Neuro Tribes. Whoa, what's that about? So that is a uh, that's a book about autism. Oh, neat. And like sort of not necessarily the history of it, because what 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 differentiates this one to from the other two to me is this is a modern like we're we're studying autism. Autism's mm -hmm. probably always been around, but we're studying it at an increased rate. We're focused on it. Um, and so it's 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 new. It's new information. It's, yeah. it's new uh, someday historical references. Right. So the master like yesterday's sex at dawn and the master switch are like today's neuro tribes and stuff. And I don't know. I just That's find that to be really cool. Like when I was a kid, I remember thinking, I don't know, maybe I'm wrong. But like as a kid, I thought that there were like absolute truths. Like once I could learn something, I was done learning it. And that's just never true. Um, and I think Neurotribes is a cool example of that. You know what? You're right. Because that's I think that's kind of the attitude I had as a kid. And now that I'm older, I realize that that's not the case at all. You never stop learning and you never nope. stop growing ever. And we all we keep evolving as a species and as, as you know, as humanity and stuff. And so we're constantly taking new, you know, we, we need to rewrite and take take new passes at some of the things that are hundreds of year old, years old and stuff like that. So, yeah, I mean, um, um, I think, yeah, it looks like my first degree is in history. Um, Renaissance and early modern studies. I was really obsessed with the Renaissance because I love the idea cool. of like innovation and change. And that's when mm -hmm. a, a, a drastic change took place, like the French Revolution and all the different revolutions and changing from this idea of like a hierarchy and and nobles and nobility to like the idea of a, of a free people and freedom and, you know, the constitution and all those kind of things. So that's, that was something I was really interested in. I was really interested actually in, 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 the study of religious history mm -hmm. from like the very beginning, like ancient pagan cultures and societies and stuff like that. And I mean, that's part of the reason why I love, I like Civ six so mm -hmm. much because it, it, it looks at all these things and you get to kind of like, you know, experience, especially when I see the art. Cause I spent some time studying art history, of course. So <laughs> I did like an interdisciplinary degree. So when we studied history, we would look at, art history, we look at social history, we look at religious, we look at everything multi, like in a, a multi perspective. So that way we'd have a better, more foundation of understanding of it. So it's really interesting to hear you talk about your favorite books. <laughs> and you'll have to like send me the links to the books. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, the last one on the list. So that was for again, everything fantasy, uh, I love. Um, but the last one I'm gonna I'm gonna again, another category of book really is called predictably irrational. What? Which is sort of you're teaching me uh, something. <laughs> it's a really cool book about how humans um, aren't really logical and we can use oh. that conclusion to predict illogical behavior type of a thing, um, if that makes any sense. And yeah. that's one that meant a lot to me because I was an econ major in college and econ um, really is founded on, on, on a couple different principles. One of them is. Uh, rational human behavior, right? Like, so all of these models are trying to like predict rational behavior. And I got to a point where I'm like, none of this, but, but, but humans aren't rational. We're crazy. We don't make, like, we think yeah, the like decisions we're the doing Yeah, like the toilet paper hoarding. Can you explain that? <laughs> can you uh, explain actually, that? I'm so happy actually, I got I can, toilet let paper. Me tell you. Okay, I uh, want to no, hear it. I have it. no idea. I, I had oh, no idea. I was, it's I was, no, I was no, all no. excited. I was like, tell me about it. No, I, um, yeah, so I, I don't know, like that type of a thing is really cool to me because I love psychology, sociology um, and, all, and all of that. I, I think, you know, that you use the word perspective earlier. And I think yeah. learning more about that does give us perspective and hopefully empathy and dealing with others, yes. um, you know, just some patience and some kindness when it comes to the fact that we're all kind of from different walks of life and different, like even within the U.S. here for us and, and, and certainly internationally and things like that. So um, that's it. all very, very important to me. So those are. Those are kind of I, I don't know if I don't know if I was can it call hard. I interviewed favorites. someone yesterday and they had a hard time. They're like, oh, five bucks. This was tough. That was not a hard list for me to come up with. Once I came up with the conclusion of like, I'm, I, I don't they don't have to be like, I don't have to have an emotional favorite response to them. But like five books that kind of meant something to me or or represent significant portions of my philosophy. So, OK, because I was I was afraid I'm like, should I give you guys say, should I say 10 or I thought, you know, five really makes you have to think. You know, you have to yeah. really rationalize. You really have to think about it. So let's see what people are saying here for a second. Mm -hmm. Use Certainly. logic, 
for our illogical nature, says flying. Correct. Um, and um, Nautilant said, that's been a sticking point of mine for economics for years. Yep. <laughs> uh, referring to what you were, you were saying. And uh, rational human behavior. Somebody laughed at that. <laughs> that was nice maestro maestro yeah um and mooster did point out something that national gallery has a fantastic website so there are a lovely like when we think about libraries right now we also need to think about um museums and like the national archives of the united states has amazing there's a lot of these places that have wonderful resources that you guys can all access for free so that's something else to think about, because when we think about libraries, we also need to think about, like, it, it was amazing, because I actually got to do an underground tour of the Library of Congress. Cool. And it's very different than what people think. There is an sure. underground system that a car can drive through that connects all of the libraries, because the, the Library of Congress is actually quite big, and they have, like, seven different buildings and and i got i got to see something which i thought was really cool you know i got to see their map archives Ooh. and they had i walked in and it was as i asked i'm like how big is this and you look to the right and you look to the left and next thing you know i'm like how big is this they're like this is like seven football fields <laughs> of maps yeah and and, and it's really interesting because like we we're talking about we talk about books we're talking about history we're talking about um, understanding past knowledge to better understand today's knowledge, basically. And I think that's really interesting. Those are some of your favorite books, and I had never heard of them. <laughs> I'm like, but that's 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 good. Um, do you have any? Is it all five? That was all five. Okay. And then and then again, just if the cold category of fantasy books, all of them. <laughs> all of them? Hey, that's cheating. It is. I know. I know. <laughs> it's, it's cheating in the same way when I ask, uh, when I tell people one of my favorite, uh, one of my desert island movies would be the Lord of the Rings trilogy. <laughs> I get all three. <laughs> I agree. I really, I was just talking to this about, about Britt Wolf, who's another content creator yesterday, and I interviewed him. And we were talking about how he loves Tolkien. And I said, you know, I really see the whole Lord of the Rings trilogy as one book. It really mm -hmm. is the, it, it like the fellowship of the ring is on the ends on this cliffhanger. And then you just pick up the next it's meant to be, it really feels like it was meant to be one book regardless. Yeah, so Tolkien yeah, definitely came up with a, a pretty amazing universe there for sure. Yeah, he did. All right. So we are doing pretty good. Um, what was your first experience like when you spoke to a librarian? <laughs> Oops, sorry, guys. Aria, that's okay. Aria. <laughs> Let me mute myself um, so you can talk. Okay. Um, yeah, I, you know, that that's a hard one for me to remember, too. Um, just because I, I don't know exactly when I when I spoke with with a librarian, but I can remember a lot of helpful librarians like in high school doing research projects, research papers and things like that. Um, one of my, one of my friend's mom is, is she, she, she I don't know. I don't know. She works in a library. Does that make her a librarian? I guess so. Uh, uh no? no. Ooh, tell me, tell me, can you break that down for me? Uh, a lot of people don't realize this. They'll go up to the circulation desk and they'll talk. They'll be like, um, does this count? Like they would talk to everyone. They talk, call everyone a librarian in order to be a librarian. You have to have a master's degree. Cool. You have like wow. right now I'm working on my MLIS which is Masters of Library and Information Science. Some before they were just called they referred to like an MLS, Masters of Library Science. So yeah, so you okay. technically outside of that, you're just she considered... works at a li you know, that's but that's kind of it. I didn't mean to be rude or or, or punitive at all. Um, no. <laughs> Uh, but I'm, thank you for, for enlightening me. Um, it's like I yeah, was, I my, my other position I had was I was, I was middle management and I was a senior library technician. So okay. you can be a library technician. You don't have to have education for that. Sure. Sure. Okay. Interesting. I was yeah, just I, like, so I, don't know. <laughs> I, I would say like my experiences, no, you're good. Uh, experiences in high school, I can remember the most um, just needing help with. You know, just just talking to Dewey and figuring out his decimal system and stuff like that, and uh, yeah, know, Dewey help, helpful navigation of of library. So you had a good experience. You wouldn't say it was a bad one. I don't know that I've ever had a negative experience at a library. Wow, 
That's I mean, good. Yeah. I a lot know. of people, I, that has not been the case. Really? I've, oh. I've had bad experiences, and that's not huh. just about working at a library. Um, yeah, so, I mean, that's that's one of the biggest um, discussions in, in library school, too, is about people's interpretation of libraries and the reasons why some of the reasons why they don't want to go is they don't see librarians very approachable or the library staff aren't approachable and that will per, that can permanently destroy someone from ever wanting to go to a library again and 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 when i was talking to Brit wolf yesterday people were bringing that up where they had a bad experience so i'm really glad you had good really? experience oh yeah no i i don't i can't really say that i've had any negative experiences um, you're lucky i guess so <laughs> what kind of wait? What were you, what are some of the? I I want to. I'm cu so curious what people's well, negative experience. Well, this are. is a good point. Like Violet here says, I got in trouble for being too loud at at my local library. I mean, I had like a dream once where like my books were overdue and like, there was a librarian there, but I don't I don't remember that being a negative experience either. So I don't know. It's um, I don't know. Weird. I like well, part of like one of the things I was looking at and I was reading various journal articles because I was working on a paper for my applied research methods class and I was looking at programming for teens and one of the biggest discussions in this um, journal article was how teens have preconceptions of libraries being like a warehouse of books they don't see any usefulness of this there's no programming for them there's no space for them and that's been one of my things that I've been studying is about how teens are marginalized in a library and a lot of librarians, they just, they don't want to deal with teens. They're like, I don't want to deal with you. I don't want to see you. So you'll walk into libraries and you can tell the difference between a library that promotes teens and ones that don't. Mm -hmm. You'll like, basically, you can't find the teen area. It's shoved in some corner somewhere and it's got like this tiny little collection, if any collection at all, and they have absolutely no library programming. So it's, and that's the one thing I've heard from teens is having that bad experience, okay. but I'm really glad you didn't. And, and, and that was the thing is like someone, you know, when I was talking to Brit Wolf yesterday, he was saying one of his bad experiences was, was somebody was just rude to him when he asked for information when he was a teenager at a school that like the school librarian just didn't want to deal with him. They yeah. were just like, I don't want to deal with you. You know, why are you asking me questions? And so that kind of mentality, that old, what we call like old school thinking, since I've been taking my degree, um, is is that idea of like, you know, just lots of books and not worrying about the collection development and, and just not wanting to deal with people directly. And that's what libraries can't be anymore. They can't just be a warehouse of books anymore. They need to be like a community space, mm -hmm. really. Yeah. Oh, and they're cool. saying um, ours has a teen room with an original NHS and a, yes. and a, and a Switch. It's awesome. That's, That's what you cool. want. Yes. Yes, indeed. <laughs> All right. So what are you, because you kind of covered that, but what are your favorite subjects to read? Uh, like like history. Uh, well, not, not even history. Like, honestly, as a kid, I hated history. I just thought it was so boring. And as time goes on, as life goes on, I, I realize felt that way its too. importance. You know, yeah. I realized like like all of it, all of it, all of the wars were about, you know, oppression and suppression and overcoming that. And that honestly like comes back to what I said earlier with like information wants to be free and suppression of it is is how like, you know, governments have controlled people and stuff. Um, so obviously just having that all be out there is good. Uh, but yeah, like philosophy, uh, fantasy, I go through I, th I go through kicks of like nonfiction, fiction, nonfiction, fiction. I think um, that's so a good thing to do. Is, yeah. Like when I play video games, I have to be careful what I play because if I, let's say I play like a fantasy RPG game, I don't really want to read a fantasy book. I want to read something different. Sure. Sure. Yeah. That's, so. uh, I, I alternate like that with, um, like podcasts and music too. I go through like big music kicks and. What's yeah, your favorite music? All of it. Just like <laughs> all the books. <laughs> Uh, like no, I don't know. Books. I love new music. I love listening to. I love the the classics too, but I love experiencing new things. So I don't know. I like singer songwriter stuff. I like I like stuff that people are making nowadays, um, as well as the older stuff. So I'm an open book when it comes to that. You're an open book. I'm like lately. I know it sounds weird, but I've been into synth wave. Do you know what that is? Yeah, I mean, I can okay. I can picture it in my head. I, it's not something. It's not something I gravitate towards. <laughs> I just I've been like all about chill music lately. Like cool. very chill music, no singing in it. Just or listen to Skyrim See, music. <laughs> I, can I, I like to that, that too. I like I like you know movie soundtracks and classic classical music and stuff. So. 
Well, that's awesome. All right, so let's see where we're at. Okay, do you have a local library you visit? Yes, although not in the last month or so because yeah. everything's, it's been shut down and so everything's been shut down. Uh, but no, we, uh, we have an awesome local library here. Um, I've been there, I've got my library card and everything. Uh, they, what I, what I love about libraries, all the services that people have no idea that libraries provide, like you can get audiobooks, you can get video games. That leads into my next question. Yeah, exactly. Let's go to it. Okay, so online resources, since your library has been closed, your local library has been closed, have you been accessing their local, like their online resources at all? I have not, uh, although I guess I maybe should be. Tisk tisk. All right. Yeah, shake that pen at me. I deserve it. <laughs> Bad game mechanic. Uh, Bad. Use your failed. online resources. <laughs> what, Sassy, can you tell us, can you tell our audience um, what type of online resources we could maybe be pursuing in this? Time? Yes. So the best thing to do is to go to your library's website and they should have a button at the top that should say like online resources. And usually if you already have your card, uh, your library card set up, they should have some apps available. Uh, uh, an example is Hoopla has audiobooks, um, books, and movies. So some libraries subscribe to Hoopla, and then you get into that for free because the library's already paid the fee to get into that. Um, Overdrive is another one. Those what are just two. It depends on what your library chooses to use. So, because like basically your library will say, here are online resources. These are the ones that you can access. This is how you should go about accessing. And even if the library is closed, I'm sure you can still email the library for assistance. I'm pretty sure there's a lot of librarians that are still working from home, sure. diligently still trying to help their patrons through this uh, very difficult process. And it's free. Like, for instance, the library I used to work at, um, it was on an Air Force base. It was a community military library. And we had access to OverDrive. I still have access to it, and I love graphic novels. So oh, nice. I can access one of my favorite graphic novels right now. It's called Saga. Okay. It, I don't know if you read it. It's a mix between science fiction and fantasy. It's fantastic. I, it sounds right up my alley. Um, weirdly enough, uh, graphic novels and comics are something I've never really gotten into. Not because <gasps> I don't love them, but <gasps> just because I haven't done it. I don't know why. I, I really don't know why. It's, I know. It's unforgivable. Oh, unforgivable. The shame. <laughs> <laughs> Library shame at you. Shame, shame. Shame me. I deserve it. Yeah, but there there are, so people just be aware that, you know, go to your, your local library, whichever one you usually go to, that you already have a library card, and usually you can create account through your library card if it's already pre-set up. So just think about that. What is the saying? T TBLB is like, yes, Saga is incredible. Everyone's like, I love Saga. Why aren't you reading it, Game Mechanic? You, yeah, yeah. You 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 got way more street cred, cred today than I did. That's well, sure. like, I did take a graphic novel class. Ooh, wait. So you, like, <laughs> learned about Spider-Man or what? No. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. I do love graphic novels. Uh, to be fair, I am more of a Marvel fan than a than a than a DC fan. But I, my favorite DC character is Catwoman, okay. hands down. I love her character. Nice. She's complicated. Uh, my favorite Marvel characters is X Men because I started reading the X Men in the '90s uh, when I was a teenager because I was in I was in foster care. And I remember when the X Men uh, '90s cartoon came on, and I saw Jubilee. And she yeah, was having nice. difficulty with her foster parents, and I was like, oh, the very I'm first not episode. the only one. It's the very first episode. And I was hooked. Isn't... Yeah, that I was stuff hooked. matters. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, so I love the X-Men because I could totally identify them. But yeah, I took a graphic novel class um, because, well, I love graphic novels. And I learned about all these different types of graphic novels that a lot of people don't realize exist. Like, there's graphic novels dealing, there was like one about dealing with, uh, she was dealing with her parents getting old. And so she did like a whole graphic novel about dealing with them, like from taking care of them into their death. There's graphic novels that cover a wide range of like historical nonfiction fiction. Like there's a lot of things in graphic novels that a lot of people don't know exists and it makes it really interesting. So yeah, it's, it's, it's a little niche part of me. And I built up the graphic novel collection at the last place I was at Nice. And people would come in and go, this is the best graphic novel collection I've ever seen in my life. And I'm like, thank you. 
<laughs> I worked like, hard. Yes, indeed. Mm, yes. Good job, me. I'm just like, oh, I have myself on the back there. Well, thank you very much. <laughs> All right. I got off on the subject there. Yeah. Sorry about All that. I couldn't help myself. I love graphic yeah. novels. Yes, clearly. I love it. So check out your local libraries, guys. And that's the thing right now with ALA, um, they first for National Library Week, it was all about find the library at your place was the subject. Like, find your place at the library was their first theme. And then they're like, find the library at your place. Okay. Meaning, go to your local li library website, find where they say online resources and, and use those online resources. You know, so don't limit yourself. Even though you can't have access to the library, you can still have access to audiobooks, books, yeah. and graphic novels. So. What are your thoughts? Can I can I ask you a random question? Sure. How, how do you feel about audiobooks? Um, just as as a form of of li it's obviously it exercises different parts of your brains to listen. Mm -hmm. But what are your what's your what are your what's your take? Audiobooks are great when you're on the road and traveling. <laughs> like. So so just consumption, ex accessibility, like like convenience yes. trumps fidelity, maybe? Perhaps. I mean, this is the thing. It's it, it, What's so important about reading is, is it really ex exercises your mind. Mm -hmm. um, right. And everyone learns differently. Audiobooks are actually very difficult for me because uh -oh. I'm, a, I'm a visual kinetic learner. Okay. So like, it's really hard for me to listen to an audiobook. <laughs> But some people, if, if they learn differently, let's say they're yeah. an audio learner, they might learn more through somebody reading to them than if they read it for themselves. So are these kinds of things, like, do you think that's the function of education to, like, help us realize that? Because I didn't discover audiobooks until later in life, and I am addicted to them now. I also love sitting down and reading, too. Um, but just as far as, like you said, the convenience, like, like going for a run and listening to something like that. But I had no idea that I'm, like, a... a, a Audible audio learner, learner. I, I, audio learner i think that's um, very important with schools i mean i was thinking about being a teacher i mean i i changed my mind like a million times that's the reason why i have i also have a master's degree in history because <laughs> i couldn't make up my mind what i wanted to do now i know i want to be a librarian but it's really important you know and i've worked with special needs students as well because i have adhd i have no problem talking about these things so I find concentrating very difficult. Like sometimes yeah. people are in my streams and I'll be starting a quest in Skyrim and I'll be like, what was I doing? Where am I? What yeah. time is it? What day yeah. is it? Like, I, I feel you there. So, I mean, I think it's important to acknowledge that everyone learns differently. Like mm -hmm. when I was, um, I took, uh, another class I took was on creating like lessons, like one one-stop lesson plans. I did this whole gamification one, which I should send you the link. It's really interesting, where it was to teach um, first-year students in college how to use a library through games. And cool. it's all one whole lesson plan, but it the idea of this was to create something that targeted everyone's specific learning needs. So you have some people that are hearing, some that are focused on, on visual, some that are kinetic learners, and like, it's really important to take all of that into consideration. Cause like you're saying now, you're like, wow, I really wish I would have had audiobooks. Cause imagine how much easier it would have been for studying if you had that back then. You know yeah, what I'm saying? I would have gotten more A's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> but also wait on that, on that topic before we get yeah. too far away from it, there's another book recommendation I can make um, called reality is broken. Um, well, and it's sort of a it's sort of analysis of sort of some of the systems that we use in our like in capitalism, in our job market and stuff like that, and how not conducive to being productive they are versus something like the, it, it, it juxtaposes it with video games and how like w like World of Warcraft, for example, is an amazing system for like the reward centers of your brain. Oh, yeah, um, that's you know, that was for, something for, I was looking at my gamification class. Yeah. 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 Just like how you can kind of like. Uh, you know, use use those dopamine rewards in your brain to to motivate yourself to do more things. And like, wow, it's really straightforward because it's like, okay, here's a quest. Here's a simple, straightforward quest. You go do the quest. You come back. You get a reward. Like, I want to do another one. Let's do a, let's do more. Let's let's keep going and stuff. So that's just a, a recommendation for chat. Yeah, that sounds that sounds awesome. And then remember, like, list these off in your in your Discord too. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Now that you're sharing them, share with everybody. Okay. That way they can refer to them. <laughs>
<laughs> okay. All right. Here's a good one. Um, so we've talked about this online resources. You're just as naughty as Brit Wolf. Uh oh. <laughs> you didn't use them. All right. Oh, and now yeah. we're on to this one. Name your favorite library and explain why it's your favorite. Okay. This is going to be an off the wall answer. Um, okay. I'm but ready. I really hear me out. Okay. This is a long walk off of a pier here. Uh, my favorite library, there's an episode of Avatar The Last Airbender where they find an ancient underground lost library that possesses information they need to like further their quest. So this comes back to like um, uh, the whole storytelling element and stuff. And I just love the function of this library because they needed knowledge. You know, they didn't need swords. They didn't need weapons. They needed knowledge to like plan their attack against the Fire Nation. Um, and it's this awesome, and there's like this this like a uh, uh, bird that's like a the ancient library keeper, and it's just beautiful. Like it's everything I want a library to look oh, like. Oh wow! And then also its significance in the story, I think, is 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 awesome. So I'm gonna go with that. <laughs> it's hey, not that, a real that works. Life library, but... <laughs> hey, you know that that works too. My my favorite library, and I think I I, I mentioned it yesterday, was um, when I was at the Uni University of York in England. My favorite library was the Minster Library because it was it it was formerly like a chapel that got turned into a library. Awesome. And um, Dave was like, "For my holiday, I want to go to the library." There you go. <laughs> and so it's it's a beautiful old library, just like the kind that you would see. Like you'd see the um, you know, you'd have the the books going almost all up to the ceiling, and and that was in the, where the some of the specific older books were preserved. So, like, one of the my favorite books I got to look at was a, a map book from the 1500s, and it was one of the first ones created in England. And there was only, like, seven of these books that they made in England, and I got to see that. And I got to volunteer there, and it's just, like, you walk in, and it's, like, the whole place is obviously stone. It's masonry, yeah. so it's, like, you know, hundreds of years old. And you just walk in and just the feeling of these old spaces and these old books and like, you know, walking around in that history when I got to study it was, it was phenomenal. So that, that was my favorite library. Awesome. I love that. Very cool. I loved it. Okay. Do you participate in any library programming when libraries like, like were open? Like programs and things of, I really, I really don't as far as... Yeah, I, I I don't. I just short answer no. I'm sorry. <laughs> scold, me, scold me, hit shame, my hand. Shame, shame, shame. I shamed Brit Wolf too because like a lot of people don't realize <laughs> that um, a lot of libraries need volunteers. And if you come up with some innovative, awesome like way to volunteer and say, hey, I want to set up a program. This is something I want to do. Let's say for instance that you were like, I'd love to teach teens how to set up a Twitch stream. And you could give lessons to teens on how to do that and help them um, and help create a community with all of this awesome digital stuff and, and teaching them all these amazing things. And that's something, you know, if, if you don't find a program you like at a library, there's always a program you can make. And that's what I did. And my last library worked out, I created a game club. Nice. And everyone brought in board games and it costs the library nothing. Yeah. So that's just me going shame. Shame. I actually have like a whole shame soundtrack thing. Let me let me get it oh, out. Man. Hold on. I, I have I it ready. It. Shaming yeah. you. Shame. 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 <laughs> That's fantastic. <laughs> I have I have the best sound clips. I have, I have like all these from Monty Python too. I can't help myself. Nice. All right. So that was just me scolding. Yep. <laughs> I'm done yep. scolding. Oh, this leads into the next scolding. That's the next question, yes. <laughs> Follow-up scold, go ahead. <laughs> have you ever volunteered at a library? No, I guess I should. I didn't. I guess I didn't consider that as an option. <laughs> <sighs> it's okay. Yes. So there's lots of things that you can do with volunteering, guys. Like, like I was telling Game Mechanic, you can set up a program, just volunteering to come in and help them. Like if they're doing a big book sell or if they're doing a big event, like over the summer, uh, lots of libraries need help doing the summer reading program. I mean, right now I know libraries are shut, but when they open, that's when they're really going to need volunteers because they're going to like, if they, they, they stayed completely shut, 
then that means they have people kept returning books and books didn't get put away. But I, I bet you almost 100% every library probably still has a couple of workers mm -hmm. still working. But that's something to think about. I won't shame you again. <laughs> I promise. It's double jeopardy if you shame me again. It's Basically double jeopardy. I have the jeopardy sound too. <laughs> it's going double, double jeopardy. All right, we'll move on to the next one. Um, how do you think a library can improve to entice more people to them? What do you so think? I, I'm probably, I'm going to say this and you're going to tell me it already exists is my guess. Um, but I, I was thinking of a lot of the cool programs that like museums um, and, and art galleries have done where they do like evening programs that are like adult focused and they like serve alcohol and like you come and you can kind of have a, a different I'd be there. look at the marina because there are no kids there and they serve you wine and you can kind of like explore and stuff. I'd love to see that with libraries, maybe with the, maybe like event inspired with like authors or, or whatever else. Um, but I, I'd love to see some like, um, some social programming like that. Uh, that would, that would get me there. Yeah. And I think you make a very valid point and that comes back to my other thing. It's like when I, when I created the game club, for instance, at the library on base, there's a lot of airmen that's young military people and they mm -hmm. live in the dorms, and they have no cars, and they have nowhere to go, and they had nothing to do on the base. And so creating a program on Saturdays where it was something adults could do, and it was more focused towards teens and adults. And I think that's a very valid a valid point. Like some some libraries I've heard about doing like wine and design, or they'll sure. do like a movie club thing, like a movie night, or they'll do mm -hmm. like a pub quiz night. So it's it's all about libraries like changing and violet says here we have a trivia night with a local craft beer restaurant and a reading club where you can drink wine that see that's sign me up already just <laughs> sign like, me up when all of this is over when all of this yeah. is over right yeah. so i think you bring a very valid point and i think another issue with libraries and it's something that um i've noticed throughout my degree is is using marketing like mm -hmm. social media which is free but using marketing so that people are aware that they're doing all of these things too. Like you can have the best library in the world. And I learned this, you know, with writing my various papers and studying various things. But if you don't advertise it and people aren't aware that it exists, no one's going to use it. One cool way to maybe grassroots advertise things like that or get involved with the community, um, it seems like, um, like uh, farmers markets are a big thing. You know, I wonder if there's a role that libraries could have a booth at like a farmer's market to advertise their programs like that or, or, or offer, you know, some sort of product or whatever alongside it. Um, I just love to see that like representation. They could there do like a like, gardening class. Absolutely. A they could absolutely. say, hey, these are all the like we we did a summer reading program once and Sharice, she's like, we'll, we'll do a gardening class. And then we put in. All the kids came and they got, and then we had one of the main people that takes care of all the stuff on base come and like tell kids how to garden. And then they put out gardening books, but mm -hmm. you can also, you could also do the same for, for adults that are looking to, you know, get better at gardening. Um, I, I, I have to share, I don't know where, when and where to share this as far as the questions go. Oh, that's fine. Um, but uh, I've, I've, I've even talked about this on stream, but I, I've talked about this with friends and I really believe this. Um, you, you kind of, it's a fun thing to do to be like, what would you do if the zombie apocalypse happens? Where do you right? go? What do you do? And everyone's like the grocery store, the, the hardware store, you know, blah, blah, blah. I, first place I'm going, the library, because I don't know how I, I need, I need books on agriculture. I need like all yes. kinds of resources that we're so used to having online now. Like I go to the That's library true. first every time. You're like library hands down. Yep. And it's, it's the, the safest books. place because no one else is going to be thinking of it. Exactly. And some books you could just decapitate a zombie with. I know, you're just like, you're pulling some John Wick there with the book, Take right? Take this atlas. <laughs> I didn't like you. I, I would I would just set Jane Patterson books on fire and throw them at zombies. That's what I would do. It's an ongoing joke in, in, in library school and libraries general is that there's like a million Jane Patterson books and, and oh, librarians okay. just hate them because they're murder mystery and they'll okay. have like, there'll be a whole section of Jane Patterson. <laughs> and there was like actually a meme of his face on this one library meme page. And like, he was like, do you miss me now? And everyone's like, no. No. Not even no. So I can totally get that. <laughs> Aria, calm down. She's been really barky lately. She's been barky. 
All right. Well, I thought she's cooped up like the rest of us. I know. (laughs) She gets a walk every day, though. Every day. Oh, they also have a game night for teens. (laughs) I'll walk you. I can virtually walk you. I'll just say, hey, how's it going? Let's just go on a virtual walk. (laughs) It'll be good. Good times. Mm -hmm. I do that a lot. Like my friend. Uh, a really good friend of mine, Tomazi, is also one of, he also is one of my moderators, and we'll just be chatting while we're on a walk. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So that's good. I, know, I, I often call like my folks or friends. That's good. You can bug me too. I'm okay All with right. that. That's All right. Deal. Okay. So, <laughs> what was your worst experience at a library? It sounds like you didn't like, have one. Yeah, I really did. I out. really haven't had any. I I will say I didn't love like when I was at U of I. Um, it's such a big school and a big campus that I didn't love going to the library because it was so like crowded. I didn't feel like I could get a lot of work done there. Obviously, I was the exception to that rule because there were a ton of people there. Um, but I didn't have those li- I didn't like take advantage of those, and I sort of regret that looking back. But it was I don't know. Maybe it was just I was insecure about it, or I don't know. But uh, I didn't love. I didn't take advantage of those. So. Maybe Wait, you said there was local, there was stuff going on at the big library or? No, just too many students, people. too many people, too <laughs> many, like... <laughs> like, it was just like, ah. No, I totally understand that. I mean, I'm trying to, like, I, I decided to live on campus when I did my first master's degree because, you know, back then you, you couldn't find everything on the internet. You really right. had to do a lot of books. And I wanted to be walking distance from the library because I didn't want to sit in a library around people, I just like to get my things and go because I like my own space. Yeah. If that makes yep. sense. Yep. I, I get that. That's kinda, I feel kind of guilty I saying that as somebody who loves libraries. It's like I love to and I love libraries showing up for a program like a game club. But for just studying, I just find it difficult. Because I was it's... always distracted. I was too distracted by those. Yes. Situations. Yeah. I'm the same way. Yeah. It's so funny. OK. Have you ever encountered a rude librarian? Again, just that one time in the dream where I, uh, I overdue <laughs> books and dream. I didn't have any money. and Just a dream? That's not bad. <laughs> OK, so what roles uh, should be enforced in a library and why? Uh, this is controversial, but I think no shushing. Stop shushing <laughs> me. Shh. <laughs> Shh. Not a popular opinion. Shh. I don't think I don't think we should shush in libraries anymore. No shushing. I agree. That is not a popular, like, I was shushed at work. Wow. Okay. Wow. I was shushed. Let me tell you the <laughs> story, guys. Yes, I went please. into the computer lab, and there was a parent with his son, and he was trying to learn something, and I was trying to help him and talk him through it. And the woman right here, she looked at me, and she went, shh. <laughs> And I just gave her side eye and I was just like. See, wouldn't wouldn't it have been amazing to point to a sign that says no shushing? I know. That's a great. I love that. <laughs> Flying says there should be designated shushing areas. Absolutely. It's like if you if you if you're in the mood for getting shushed, like go in the shush wing. Well, I mean, like last yesterday we were talking about um some roles that uh like Brit Wolf thought fines should be done away with. Yes, I I think I agree with that. As as a socioeconomic component of libraries, um, it tends to. I came up with an alternative. Oh, what was it? That either fine or community service. <laughs> so you serve the community. So let's say they have a big sale, right? So you just show up and you just help, and then that's it. Because time is more valuable than money sometimes, right? Sometimes. For some people. For some people, it's not. Uh, and I think that's why, like, socioeconomically, I, I, I think I agree. Get rid of the fines and, you know, it, yeah. Yeah, you're like, get know. away. You, you have to have some sort of, of control over it, but. Volunteering. You know. Yeah. Think about it. If, like, let's say a teenager, like, a parent tried really hard to be responsible with their child, and you know they do, and sometimes children are can just not be aware of something, right? So, like, it gets, uh, a book gets trashed, and then the parent's like, well, what can I do about this? And, like, instead of just being like, well, you need to pay or you can't use it, oh, just come in with your child and volunteer at story time. That's a like, good solution, too, Violet, I think. Yeah, what did Violet say? We have no fines for kids or teens. Uh, you get fines taken away if you donate canned goods. See, that's another great viable great, option. Yeah. I think there's there needs to be options. Cool. 
Yeah, That's I like that. wonderful, Violet. I hey, like Ring Lighten. Yeah. I mean, it sounds great until someone with two jobs, no time or money has an overdue book. Yeah. I like, I think there should be options because when you look at the budget of libraries, they always have to accommodate for the fact of, we know we're not going to get all these items returned. That's, that's always included in a budget. You know that there's a certain amount that you purchase will never come back. Hmm. And I think I, the only reason why I thought about volunteering is I thought it taught, um, it taught responsibility in a way that it, it could also encourage people that might have never thought about, like, like teens that volunteered at our library, it really helped them. Like, I was a mentor to them, and it really turned their lives around in some situations. So I thought it was viable to say, how about offering up volunteer work as an alternative because that gives them an opportunity to be somewhere too. Like maybe it's difficult for them. Maybe their parents can't watch them after mm -hmm. school. And instead of, instead of like, and that's that attitude people have towards teens. And it's like, well, they're just disruptive and they're this. And it's like, well, if you give everyone a leadership opportunity and you give them an opportunity to be the best person they can be, it can really change life. And I've seen yeah. it happen that way. And, and mentoring teens specifically um, is a great way, is, is the perfect time to be doing that. So I, I love that idea, too. I, I think you're right. Options are sort of the name of the game. Um, you know, if, if you're happy paying your fine, pay your fine. If you, if you want to, you know, if you don't have that money and you've got a little time, and then I don't know. There has to be a, a solution to the people that don't have anything. I agree. But, um, you know, maybe they can just forgive, be forgiven. They can draw um, a nice picture of the librarian. I mean, I mean, there's absolutely. options. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. Because that's what advocating for libraries is. It's like, you know, you you can't be running a library based on the fines that you receive alone. That sounds like a terrible idea. I just I can't yeah. even comprehend that. So I agree yeah, with yeah, you. Yeah. I think that would be good to have have those options. Um, yeah, but we were talking about the no shushing. And I think that and and the Brit Wolf brought this up yesterday that he said it would be nice if libraries, um, it's called the bookstore model that some libraries are going in where they're trying to change the way a library feels. So you walk in, the bookstore model actually sets the library up like as if you were walking into a Barnes and Noble and that you might be more like, hey, this is more comfortable. I can sit in a chair. I can have a coffee. I can do this X, Y, and Z and maybe have some nice music playing in the background. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then if you still need, and then I would just have a designated quiet area because let's just face it, guys, I'm loud. <laughs> <laughs> when I told my parents I was working at a library, they were like, how's that working for you? <laughs> I'm a very loud person. I literally have my mic down a little person, bit. <laughs> I'm with you. I, I, I'm just... I've never been accused of being too quiet. <laughs> yeah, I'll never forget. Like I was in a grocery store. <laughs> I was at the front of the grocery store. My dad was on the back at the, all the way end of the, of the grocery store. And he's like, I could hear you clear to there. <laughs> uh -huh. Uh -huh. So, yeah, I, I believe that these are really good ideas. And, I mean, that's stuff that – and this is a, that's another reason why I'm interviewing you guys this week. Because I think hearing it from the patrons – like, sometimes when you get so caught up with library school or you're working in a library – you you can you can start seeing the patrons as the enemy because they, I have I have so many stories. Oh yeah, that's that, but that's any job dealing with the public. <laughs> that's retail. That's everything. It's, right, it's... and I've done I've done retail. I've done food service. I've done like everything. So I I really think that's why I really appreciate you having this interview with me today, and I appreciate yes. the other content creators because it's teaching me again about what to be aware of, like where can we improve and what what can we do that's better. Yeah. You know, yeah. And, and yeah. And being on the same side with things like we're we're not even this isn't even a capitalist sort of interaction. We can just be friends. It's cool. <laughs> I know. Right. Don't have to worry about that. Yeah. Oh, so this is a good question because you kind of talked about it earlier. If you had to build a perfect library, what would it be like and why? Well, OK, so. I don't, I don't know about publicly. I've always had that dream of like that floor to ceiling library in a house someday. Like if I were ever to have, like I, as a kid, I feel cool. like I cared a whole lot about stuff and I had CDs and it was like, look at how cool I am via all my stuff. I 
hit 20 or something and stopped caring about owning actual things. But the one thing that sort of stuck along with me is like books. I love having books. I love being able to like open them and like you said earlier, smell yeah. them. And they're so wonderful. I'd love to have a floor to ceiling, like a library with just you know, many leather bound books in a rich mahogany uh, sort of situation there. Wow. Um, yeah. But That's uh, I, I would love that a sounds personal awesome. home <laughs> library. That would be my dream situation with like aw awesome chairs to like lounge in. And I, I, I guess I picture like for some reason, like kids being able to like love that and explore that and look at that with like majesty. Um, so, yeah, a personal library would be what I would do. Oh, that sounds amazing. I love it. <laughs> okay, now, this is the question I added at the last uh -oh, minute. <laughs> Why should society care and invest in libraries? Uh, I mean, I think it's now, it's important now more than ever. I think, I think information is information and facts are facts and not enough people know that and construe that. And that's an amazing uh trait of humanity i'm a huge fan of our species but we also have to remember that like if you're gonna support your argument and you're gonna try to convince something of someone you need to know how to do that you need to do that scientifically and through th you know through primary sources ideally and you know we we need if you just look at media and mm -hmm. and, and and how um <laughs> manipulative biased i'm not sure the right word yeah I don't fake mean news is a, a big thing in the library it world is. it is and it really and, is and having having people be smart and be able to discern between like there was um i i see it all the time with ads uh there was there was a twitch ad recently sorry twitch um, <laughs> but it was i've seen some of their ads oh my so gosh unbelievable to me because the product that these two streamers were selling they never used it. They never said they used it. They just implied and like connect it and they let you, your brain as the reader connect the dots and assume that they had used and, and, and that this streamer had used this program to find this other person. Oh, wow. I don't think that was ever true. They never specifically said that. Also, there's the, I, I, I had this blew me away. I wish I wish I could go to my my uh, cupboard and, and find this, but nutritional facts, right? Right. So I was looking at the back of the thing in nutritional facts and it was the 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 calorie like it was it was something like calories per serving. Um and then it and then it showed you like oh that there are clearly two uh servings in this but then like they manipulated the numbers and it said like about 1.7 so they were able to very dishonestly show like make you think that you were eating less calories than you actually were because of the way that they had like laid out the nutrition wow. table and stuff and i'm like i don't think most people would catch that i don't think most people would see that um but it's so manipulative and that's that's that like i don't know i don't want to call it intelligence i just think it's like a savviness <laughs> like a savviness of people to be able to look at that and go, oh, wow. You know what I mean? Yeah, um, and that's what Garvidal, who just followed, thank you for that, says is research, research, research. And that's why it's so important when, like, I, you know, I, I just recently joined Twitter the last two years. And sometimes people will just, they'll just quote numbers. And I'm like, well, where's you, where are you pulling the statistical data from? If I don't know where you're getting your source from, how am I supposed to just believe that? Right. That's dangerous. Right. And people it, just it, take it, it for it face value. And I mean, that's a big deal. Yeah, it's it's a it's a scary time. So I think more than ever, libraries have a role and education has a role. And I think if we can do anything for future generations and the survival, survival of our species, it's make people smarter. Yeah, and I like what TBL says about their library. My library serves a huge portion of the local homeless population, and I'm so grateful for that. Winters here can be pretty bad. And I can't think of a better place to shelter a storm than a library. Aw, that's amazing. Yeah, good job, Chicago. I love that. And I mean, that's the thing about libraries is, um, and that's been my biggest thing while I've been studying. And when I finished my collection development class, and I, I brought this up to Brit Wolf as well, the last question we had is, what is a library without books? Mm. If it was a well, total a digital fascinating... library. That's a fascinating topic, actually. Like, I was just talking uh, to a friend last night about this, and I'm I'm I, I'm of an age that I remember the world before the internet. Me too. You know, 
back when we had to go outside for entertainment and things like that. And so we have this crazy transition between a totally digital world, people that grow up on iPads and, and, and have a Facebook at eight years old or whatever, when they, when they're not supposed to. And, and stuff. And <laughs> you're just like, <laughs> it's, it's, it's really crazy. So what does that look like? I don't know. Maybe I think there probably is there, there's certainly a possibility for libraries without books physical books. Um, that's probably something that we'll have to deal with at some point. I don't know. What do you think it looks like? Well, th this is the reason why libraries are moving in a different direction about creating a community space. And when I talk about like that bookstore model, that's kind of the direction they're going. They want resources to be more available, more comfortable. And like, I mean, if you create a good collection, there shouldn't be a book anywhere because everyone should be so interested in what you created that there shouldn't be something on the shelf if you've created a good collection if you've really done your research if you've done a demographic if you've done a, a what's called a SWOT analysis which is strengths weaknesses and all this other fancy stuff if you really know your community you create a collection you weed a collection you create a collection um policy that that emphasizes the 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 information seeking needs of that of that community. And if you're creating a good policy and you have one in place and you have a good collection in place, then there hardly should be anything there. But libraries can no longer, and this has been the biggest thing, can no longer be just a warehouse of books. It can't just be a place that houses books. It needs to yeah. be the community center. So a lot of libraries are going in a direction of providing community needs. Like if you have an ESL population, a lot of people need to learn language, then you're gonna start looking at having language learning books, uh, creating programming, ESL classes for free. Um, if you have an elderly population looking at what they're interested in, maybe they want a bingo night, maybe they want a night to just talk about a specific subject. I mean, like I said, like a high teen population, then you're gonna wanna look at programs that emphasize teens. It's like, and it's also like my philosophy too is about creating programs that cost hardly nothing. And, the, and, and it is possible to do that. Yeah. You're making me really want to cool. switch careers and become a librarian. <laughs> 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 I mean, it's, it's, I was, I was wondering what was off with Sassy's camera today. It's either mirrored or not mirrored compared to how it usually is. Oh, okay. Well, it's because of my, yeah, it's Discord flips things. Yeah, my, I'm all off over here too. <laughs> I know, we're both like. You can see some of Vox, my plant over there. <laughs> oh, your plant, you named it. That's adorable. It's a, it's a Dracaena plant, which means lady dragon, and Vox was oh. a female dragon in EverQuest. So. <gasps> That's adorable. I love right. it. Now I need a plant in my <laughs> office. I feel like I'm yes. a little plantless here. I have plants downstairs okay, I have though. A, I have a question. So you, yeah. you're you doing these interviews. Um, so, so often I feel like with interviews, uh, what doesn't happen is the interviewer doesn't get asked the question. They I'm ready. Be asked. Are, no, I'm going to put this back to you. Okay. Are there any questions that I haven't asked you that you really want to answer or like get on your high horse about or, or just sort of monologue for a minute? Um, um, my biggest complaint. <laughs> My biggest issue. The reason why I went into library school was because of the previous place I worked at. I love the community. It was on an Air Force base. It served over 10,000 people. It was military, active duty military members and their families. It was civilians. Um, we had a huge children population. Thank you for that follow. Sorry, Aria's losing it. Aria, it's okay. Aria also says thank you. Yes, let me, bring me a toy, come here. Let me give her her toy real quick. Let me give her a toy real quick. She's hearing yeah. the follow sound. I must have heard it up really loud. All right, if she continues, I might have to just walk. Give me one second, I'll be right back. That's cool. I'll entertain chat. Hi chat. Hi. Well, bye, Arya. <laughs> Welcome back. <laughs> Sorry about that, guys. No, she just you're fine. She, so I was asking you yeah. about your. You were telling me your one complaint or whatever. Um, what was the question that you wanted me to ask you that I haven't asked you? Okay, so that 
I, I think it's about leadership because that's the whole reason why I did my degree. Um, like I was saying, I really love this community. And then I had a terrible director that, um, that oversaw me. And thank you for all those follows, by the way, guys. Um, and oh, I don't know who this is. Yeah, they need to leave. Stop it. Uh, I got it. Bye. <laughs> it's just like, really? Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's Ridiculous. so funny. So anyways, I was talking about leadership and um, I had, it was just like, I had a director and they were much older. They were this, the boomer generation. So we were talking about generational stuff yesterday and I'm generation X and this was their second job. They had just retired and this was supposed to be their fun job, but they didn't have a, they didn't make a collection management or they didn't have a collection policy. They, they hardly had a library policy. And so there was books that were like 50 years old. There were no programs for any certain age groups that were really important. And, and, and it made me realize how important leadership is. Like, and, and, it, and it was a toxic environment. And this happened to me with two directors in the three years I was there. Wow. And the one director was old and, and she didn't believe in technology. She didn't want to acknowledge any kind of new policies. She didn't want to do any of these things that need to be done. Like you need to maintain a library. It's just like a garden. And if you just let weeds grow and weeds is an analogy of books that have been sitting there for years that nobody checks out, nobody uses, it, it, it just suffocates things and it gives no one a reason to come back to, to that collection, right? So she, she left and then another person came and she had no idea how to be a director because there's a lot of government policies that you have to follow and Air Force regulations. And so I basically did her job in my job as a senior library technician. And it was toxic and she attacked me and she was horrible to me. Um, get those books off my lawn is right. And, and so I left that situation and, and, and it made me realize that what I really want to do is lead. I've always been selected as a leader. Leadership is important because if you understand your people, your community, you do the research, you, you do the demographics, you look at what matters, then you can, you can help a community grow. And there's nothing more rewarding to me than seeing somebody happy or fulfilled in their life and they feel better for it. And that is to me is a real, real reward. And I also believe that you can't just treat employees like they're ants that you just step on. You know, do you think do you think because it's government funded that there's uh, less accountability at that leadership level? Or do you have any thoughts on that and maybe why that person was still in their job, even though they were clearly not doing a great job at moving their library into the modern world and taking care of like like you said, leadership. I that that's some, I've been in management my whole freaking life. Um, so I know all about that stuff. And it's you know, it is hard to achieve. Businesses don't get anywhere close to perfect on it either. Um, but do you think that there was anything about, or was it, she was a bad egg and it was, <laughs> it was like that she was, a, a one of them was chosen because she was like the last person and there was a hiring freeze and all this other stuff. Right. Yeah. Um, but it's just the person who hired her was out of touch with what the community needed. And I, and, and then it sounds like they hired another person that's terrible. And I, and I had told, I had told my former boss boss, who I actually really liked and get on really well with, and she's lovely. I said, whatever you do, you need to hire someone that's straight out of school. They're going to be motivated. They're going to be excited. They're going to have lots of fresh new ideas. And that's kind of what you want. And unfortunately, some people don't want that. They don't want change. They don't want right. new and they're terrified of it. And that's something like when I took, I took a project management class and a change management class, and I learned a great deal about how change management works and what you can do to create change in a workplace. And it's not an easy avenue or easy thing to do, but I really, my motivation is like, I'm all about um, creating change, motivation for change. Um, I really want to like rev people up, get them excited about and thrilled and happy about new. I want to hear what their ideas are. I want to include them in decisions. I want them to feel invested in whatever it is that we're doing. If I, whatever I'm doing, I'd, I'd like to be either doing programming at a library or like the marketing behind a library, but anything I can do to help really. So that, that was the thing that you, 
I wanted to cool. throw in there real quick. Yay. I'm glad. So I really appreciate that. Can you think of anything else? No, this is so fun. I loved talking libraries with you. <laughs> <laughs> so was my questions pretty good then? I was, I thought I would, I tried to keep it. I was like 20 felt like it might be too much, but I thought this was a good number. I, you know, like not, not, I don't think in order to do an interview like that, not every question is going to be gold with every single person. And so there was enough in there that I, I was able to get excited and expound upon, um, even though some didn't like apply to me or whatever. And that's, that's fine. I think you did a great job. Oh, you're so sweet. Thank you. I give you heart. <laughs> right That's the thing I do. I always give a heart. Well, let's see if we can. I, I want to see if I always like to raid Norm. He's on. Nice. Is he on? I don't know. I, I do not see, know. I don't see Norm. I was trying to see if there was someone else from your community you might want to raid. Oh, that's all. Dude, follow your heart. You do you. Do you. <laughs> you don't have to okay. support any of us. Oh, let's like I like old gray hair. He's really sweet. Yeah, he's fantastic. Yeah. He's All right, we'll guy. go raid him, guys. Um, okay. And it's like I usually have a closing screen, but it can't close from this for some reason. So Worries. you and I can say goodbye at the same time. And we're gonna go raid him. He's playing Animal Crossing, and I fantastic. think that's a big game right now. Everyone loves, Everyone's right? Playing Everyone's playing it. Yes, absolutely. Okay, raid old. Let me make sure. I'm terrible with spelling. I gotta be honest. <laughs> I got, oh wait, I don't want to put that there. <laughs> I put that right over her face. I'm so terrible. Okay, gray, old gray hair. Make sure I did that right. Old gray hair. That's so funny, I put you over us. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see, all right. All right, guys, we go, if we, let's go raid him and say hi. I hope everyone had a lovely time. Thank you, everyone, for the follow. Sorry for that quick troll or whatever. It doesn't matter. No worries. So thank you so much, um, Game Mechanic, for caring so much about okay. libraries and being a part of that today. And thank you, everyone, for being a part of the conversation. If I missed something you said, I apologize. I love to see you guys back. I tend to play RPGs. But uh, remember, celebrate National Library Week, and I'll be back with Skyrim Grandma on Friday. So we're going to go raid Super old gray cool. hair and, and pop in and say hi. So good night, guys. Bye. Good night, everybody. Thank you for being here. Bye.